What's going on, everybody? This is your man, Spaceman Stu. And if you've heard any of your content aired on our platforms, remember, UAP Radio is your local and online news media broadcasting company who specializes in bringing you the news of the community. So if you would like your content aired or an interview, please contact us at UAPRadio.com. Shot of whiskey in a backup. Why can make these niggas wanna act tough? Run up on my niggas like a Mack truck. Y'all ain't never seen this type of action. Police wanna cut us by the fractions, feed us by the rations, like a main attraction. Other niggas wanna do the same shit. So I'm so suspicious of the niggas that you came with. I done seen a lot of niggas cough. I done seen them niggas get ignored. I done seen the same niggas fall. Then they get to snitching like sport. Make a nigga never wanna talk. Probably end up in a copper port. Don't nobody wanna claim they faults. Storm recognition for they heart, dog. Sympathy for niggas, never that though. All of Palestine on the tag mode. Every other station got an asshole. Line to the pot, tryna make it hot. Promise it ain't all about the blacks though. Crime just a crime, cause the white don't thug right. All because they didn't get it, tell it to the thug life. Turn under the rug type, you know what the gov like. Jizzy off the drugs, right? Nigga, no, I'm not hot, but I want it, but I know they can't handle the truth. Want it, but no, they can't handle the truth. Want it, but no, they can't. Can't handle the truth. Want it, but no, they can't. Jack probably bug. Positive, these drugs fake. Even that, it maybe I should lay off on my intake. Even that, it maybe yo, this weed is just a mistake. Even that, it maybe I'm just going for my friends say Only off uppers, but stuff empty and make. Brain feel like pasta. Thoughts feel like panic. No serotonin depleted. My sources all need some happiness. Smiles more important, but. <sighs> Getting too conscious. Gotta get ignorant, gotta be honest Woke up this morning, skyline was sunny Rolled up five blushes to keep it a hundred Just booked the shoot while some coke for the bunnies Put on my heels, now I'm tall as my money Tall as my money Put on my heels, now I'm tall as my money Tall as it, tall as it Lost all my picks when that decode got broken Five words got spoken, truth just that potent When my man died, I took that as an omen Funny how niggas was down for a moment Now they look at me like I'm the opponent I know this, I know it This is your man, Spaceman Stu, a.k.a. The Black Fiend, Black Phoenix Productions. You're tuned in to the UAP radio show, the Underground Apocalypse podcast show, where we take the underground world and turn it upside down to the surface. It's what? Wednesday, and y'all already know what we in here doing. We in here live for the five. The five-minute fickle, that is. And as always, we in here with my lovely co-host, Miss Selena. How you doing over there? I'm great. How are you? I'm great, too. I can't complain. Why Why you feel great today? Because it's a fucking lovely day. It, the, you know what? It has to be a lovely day. If you're going to ask, it's a, it's a fucking lovely day. That's what's up. That's what's up. Why is today lovely for you? Because it's fucking lovely. I, don't, <laughs> I just woke up feeling fucking lovely. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I can dug it. I can dug it. We also... Uh, we have a special guest in the building this, with us uh, this night, well, this afternoon. I'm going to say this evening. Uh... This man uh, goes by Kashmir the Jedi. Pretty sure if anybody out there uh, is a movie fan or any type of sci-fi, y'all know of Jedi, if you know at least where that comes from. I don't know if that has any correlation or not, but without further ado, I'll let this man introduce himself and explain his name himself. Kashmir, how you doing this evening, my brother? I'm good. How you doing? I'm great, man. I can't complain. Man. Um, like I said, man, I came across your music on, I think it was two episodes ago. Selena had sent me your song, and I was like, all right, let me see how this is. When I checked it out, I, I didn't know what to expect. But a lot of people be like, man, yeah, man, I got, I know somebody with some good music or whatever. And they, mm, okay. <laughs> but when she sent it to me, 
<laughs> and you don't don't be don't be be mad at me. I was kind of biased. I was like, okay, I don't know what type of music she listens to, but I'm I'm gonna oh, listen. Man. But when I checked it out, bro, it was dope. Like I was like, okay, he, now he's spitting too. And the people that I had with us, they they was vibing with it too. Poetic Ross, oh, that's the episode. We yep. were Poetic Ross, and um. We had my boy Solo uh, Solo El Dolo in there too. He goes by the name of Dore. Uh, go follow him as well. But uh, yeah, man, I checked it out, man. I, I rocked with it, man. What you know? What is the, the meaning behind your name? You know, Cashmere. This guy. <clears throat> well, the meaning behind my name, first and foremost, is spelled K A dollar sign H M E R E T H E J E D I. And you can spell my real name, which is a King out of Cashmere. So, growing up, I had a thing for comic books. You know what I'm saying? My father put me on, and I used to read, like, a lot of Batman and Star Wars. And, um, I don't know, I felt like, in a sense, Jedi was just, like, a way of saying, like, out of this world. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, you got Future, you know what I'm saying? Gucci, all them, they'd be like, you know, I'm on astronaut status. But to me, Jedi was, like, another way of saying you're out of this world and you know that you are without having to say it because to me Jedi means like wisdom so when I compare it to the game it's like you're an MC you're your own artist so in a sense it's kind of like a uh, another way of saying I am that Jedi a king's the Jedi basically but I just got clever like Eminem did where he took martial matters and right 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 and just basically used his acronyms I mean his first and last name to Flip it around. Exactly. So Okay. Okay. So with let me I'm a I'm a guess that, you know, this is the that's the vibe I'm getting. You 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 are a very deep, deep thinker. You like to think a lot. You can say that. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm, I get that from as far as, you know, wanting to be different and you you know, thinking, you know, out of this world. Like that's kinda on along the lines of where, you know, Spaceman had kinda came from. You know, I, you know, my thoughts are like yeah. out there, like most people don't think how I think. So that's kind of has, you know, correlation with that. So that's why I was, you know, guessing that it, you know, that's the vibe. Like I said, that's the vibe that I get anyway. So do you put that type of, you know, vibe into your music? Like, do you go into, you know, real deep thought with your lyrics or is it more straightforward? Um, Honestly, it's a little bit of both because uh, the way I rap in a sense is kind of with how I talk. Mm. So if I get deep with it, it's because I actually sat down and had the time to think about something and then how I can apply it to how I talk and then project it, how it plays in my mind. You know what I'm saying? So in a sense, you could say that, but to me, it's just how I talk. So I'm just trying to word it to where it's it's not dumbed down, but it's not too complex. So you can you can read in between the lines, if you get what I'm saying. Right. You you definitely like to add content into your music. Yeah. Where do you think that, you know, things are right now as far as music and content-wise for stuff? For me, or just just the music scene in general, like like would you categorize yourself like oh I, I do hip hop, I rap, trap rap, like would you categorize yourself or would you how would you describe that? Um, I don't really categorize myself. I'm gonna categorize myself. I just say I'm an artist. Okay. Overall, because you know there are different genres within a genre nowadays. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's kind of like I don't want to. Put my the objective for us or for the group for myself is to um you know show that this is what really music was you know what I'm saying in a sense but not taking away from any and everybody that's in the game right now in a sense you get what I'm saying because mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to make it seem like oh well that's trap rap you know what I'm saying this right here is that conscious you know what I'm saying nah it's not even like that it's just more like you do your style I'm gonna do my style. And we all going to branch out in the same place. You know what right. I'm saying? But how you reach the people is how you reach the people. So I wouldn't say it's really about what genre I fall into. It's just more so what I want to do and then what other people want to hear. You know what I'm saying? So it's not taken from anybody or anything, honestly. But honestly, today, you know what I'm saying? I feel like it's opened a lot more doors because now we got pioneers to trap rap, you know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. You got, of course, you got people who already, like, 
you know, set the way for people who do conscious music, or you got people who set the way for drill music. Because believe it or not, Chief Keef is, you know, OG. He's he started drill music. You know what I'm saying? First dude you heard come out of Chicago with that hurt kind of music, right? Like, using that hurt to talk about their pain in ignorant ways. You know what I'm saying? So this is all they know. So in a sense, I feel like all forms of rock we have nowadays is conscious. So in a sense, we all in that same boat. So, so you feel like e- either way, you feel like it's people just just really trying to tell a story from their their point of view, from their vantage point. That's all it really is. If, if hip hop, all it really is is telling stories, but people get that confused with how you know what I'm saying they 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 go about it. Because when you think about it, Migos is really conscious. They right. they give you plenty of stories about how they've gone to the slums. They know, made it to the top, now they're touring and going and taking trips to Africa, you know what I'm saying? And what is life like for them at that moment? That is conscious. They're moving. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So. And see, what I like about, about that way of thinking, uh, Selena, don't make me, you know, over, t- take over the show, but uh, like what I like about it is that you, you're not just looking at it like, well, this is just my style or it's just styles or whatever. You're looking at it as they're all stories. I never looked at it like that. Like you just opened my, my eyes up to looking at stuff a different way. Like it's all stories, but it's just di- from different people's point of view. Like even when it was in, like you go back to NWA, like they was telling their story, exactly. their way with their sound. New York was telling their story, their way with their sound. No different from down south when the outcast from Atlanta has started popping, popping off Mississippi, Texas. It's telling their story their way from uh, like I, I like I like that way of thinking. And like I said, I didn't think about that that way. So I'm pretty sure it's other people out there as well that probably even haven't even thought to look at it that way. What what made you wanna I guess break it down and look at it like that was just just the way you was thinking? I don't know. Um, as a kid. As far as being like open-hearted or mm. kind-hearted, I had to, I had to keep an open mind because you know what I'm saying. You, if you don't keep an open mind, you become you become ignorant to certain things. You know what I'm saying. And I don't mean in a sense where it's like, oh well, fuck you, bitch. You know what I'm saying. It's more right. like, well, ignorance is what you don't know. You know what I'm saying. And for that reason, you're you're blind to the fact. So keeping an open mind allows you to think a little bit deeper and get to see things from from different angles besides what you think you know what i'm saying then you come back and reevaluate and you regurgitate what it is that you you come up with like what's your ultimate mental conclusion you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so it's like that okay i i can dug it my brother i um wow this this is this is this is a, a interesting interview selena I, I say that because you don't get a lot of people who 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 are open-minded like that or who have that that type of thought pattern and it's hard to to get across to some people sometimes or at least be like all right can you at least understand where i'm coming from with what i'm saying like because i i can at least understand where somebody's coming from i might not agree with it but you know that's that's the life you live you know whatever like but i'm at least open to hearing from other people's perspectives and not just nah i'm the only one to think right and everybody else is wrong exactly. like but you have cuz you have a lot of people who think like that mm-hmm. like what type of responsibility you know relaying off of that do you think as an artist you would have to the people have to the people mm. for keeping that open mind and stuff like that or do you think you even have a responsibility I mean, not really. I'm just, I'm just here to do music. Um, you know what I'm saying? After that, it's whatever. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like I have responsibility, that probably what you know to be more interactive with the fans. You know what I'm saying? It's always nice to get their feedback. I love sending people my work. You know what I'm saying? That I'm close to because the feedback that I get, it's like real truthful. You know what I'm saying? So in a sense, I guess my responsibility is the music. You know what I'm saying? So when I get that feedback. I know what my responsibility is. Like, it, it gets better every time in my mind, at least. And then to them, they're telling me things where it can be critiqued to where it's better. But you know, it's, it's always room for improvement. So, in in a sense, I guess more room for improvement would be, you know, what I'm saying my responsibility if I had to sum it up. But honestly, I don't think there's no real responsibility as an artist. Just do you. 
So in general, for artists, what do you think it does for them to actually receive the feedback on their music? Because I noticed that a lot of people are not big into giving their feedback. Somebody might throw out a Facebook like every now and then, but I mean, they're not really communicating with the artist. Do you feel like that that tells the artist to just go on, continue doing what you're doing? Or is that more so something that needs to change? Um, I'm going to put it like this. It's like a yes and a no. Uh, but they not give you any feedback. Some people, their approach is like, well, I like it. You know what I'm saying? Sounds like everything else. I guess I like it. You know what I'm saying? Then there's people like, nah, man, I ain't gonna like it just because of who he is or right. the way he look. You know what I'm saying? People don't really give you a chance nowadays. So if you get that feedback, that honestly shows that they're fucking with you to a certain extent. So I guess you can say that, but to me it's like a yes and a no thing because just how, how things are nowadays. Honestly, you have to have clout on like social media now just, just to get people to give you feedback to your music. Like, right. I don't know, we, we kind of strain away from what what made the game, you know what I'm saying? So to me, I don't, I don't really think that holds any weight, you know what I'm saying? So to sum it up, it's like a yes and a no. It's like a contradiction in that sense. So, so uh, have you run into many people that you feel like give feedback just for the sake of saying some shit or like they're not really genuine in what they're saying? Have you felt that way about certain people? I mean, plenty of them. I mean, I get feedback all the time. Trust me, I get feedback. It could be like people that I've went to high school with, you know what I'm saying? They know that I'm doing music now. From mm. going from playing ball to a rapper or considering myself an artist. And the first thing I do, my, oh, I heard your music. Okay, what you think about it? It's good. What's good about it? The beat and the flow. Same answer every time. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter what the, what I send them. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, it's the same thing. Then there's people where they're going to depth. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's like, well, I like the flow. The wordplay was, you know, right with the flow. You know what I'm saying? You, you took your time with it. I can tell. And, you know, I like the sound that you came up out of this whole concept from a song. And then there's just people that be like, yeah, man, I really like it. So to me, it's just like, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, but it's just more so like, I'd rather you keep it real with me. That's how I think I'm gonna grow as an artist. But if you tell me it sounds good all the time, I can I can either go two ways with that. I can either listen to you and keep going from there, or listen to you and know you're not. I'm not hearing you. You know right. what I'm saying? So nowadays it's like you you'll just know. Like I said earlier, you just know who's really fucking with you with your sound. You know what I'm saying? Because anybody can be like, oh, it's good. Because what's good nowadays? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. what's bad nowadays? Because you got people that feel like. Uh, the younger generation that the music that they have nowadays is good but the music that was from from the 90s back on to 2000 like the early 2000s like no they don't they don't like that they don't even know who half of these artists are right so it, it just really depends it's like they're clueless on it not not necessarily they might be clueless on it they they don't even really pay it no mind if they do know something about it they it's like they don't pay any type of homage to the people who paved the way for them exactly. came before but in a sense like i mean what did they really do to open that door for them besides you know i guess get their attention towards hip-hop in general like they might look at it as well you know i reached out to you you didn't sign me to your label you didn't you know play my music on your show like i got this on my own like ain't nobody else helped me get this attention so like you know fuck the old school like do you like where do you you know you stand with that because i mean I get I get the the older generation, you know, but I get the younger generation as well. Where do you stand on that? Because I mean, if you look at it like that, what did they do besides besides you know I guess it's, start it's, it? It's not that they felt like oh well, you gotta sign me because I'm what's now I'm what's hot. You know what I'm saying? It's it's more so like uh, look I don't really care because that kind of sound just doesn't attract me. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that he's a bad artist. You know what I'm saying? But then when you think about it, for real, for real, like, if you're as good as you think you are going to be, like, by the time J. Cole finally stopped giving a fuck about rapping or Kendrick or Gucci, one of them, you know what I'm saying? People that really have paved the way for these for these upcoming new artists, you know what I'm saying? It won't matter until they're dead or gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, when it really takes full effect then their music really means something. So it's not that they feel like, oh, you can't do shit for me, or you know, you ain't do shit for me. You know what I'm saying? It's just more so like, 
yo, like, I didn't really fuck with that kind of shit growing up. Like, right. Most kids, they tell you, oh, I'm, I'm very ethnic. I listened to a lot of things growing up. I listened to country, rock, metal, you know what I'm saying? All these type of genres, but your music sounds bland. You know what I'm saying? So... I don't I don't know. Just to sum it up, nah, I don't I don't really think it's like a I'm not gonna listen because you ain't put me on, it's just more so like it's it's easier to get on. So it's kinda like we trying to cut you out the way whether you paved the way for us or not. You know what I'm saying? Like, but to me, that makes absolutely no sense. You can't just say, Oh, you didn't do nothing but open the door. That makes absolutely no sense because if the door was never open, best believe your ass wouldn't get through it. Not you specifically, but I'm talking about these new age rappers. If the door was never open, we don't have, and I hate to say it, but this generation, I don't believe that we have the work ethic and we have the know-how to do everything that those before us came and did. So I just feel like had the door not been open, it more than likely would not have gotten open just with what we see today. Like me personally, I'll listen to just about anything, but I feel like everything regardless of if it's party music or whatever, it's got to have some sort of substance to keep my attention. You know, you already know. If you send me music, I'm listening for your lyrics. I'm not listening for your beat first. You know that from experience. So it's got to have some sort of substance. And I just feel like with the previous generation, they all had substance. Every single artist. Like, I can't say that there was anybody that truly sucked. Nah... Like I, I, not that I can think of. Like even, no, <laughs> no. I, I guess it, we was, it was just bred. That people was bred different back then. Like, like you were saying, like, well, who was saying that? Um, I think it was uh, Phil Tan on an interview I saw with him. He feels like a lot of people now feel entitled to stuff versus wanting to actually work for it. True. Like you think that, oh, I deserve this. I deserve this. Well, all right, what have you done to deserve this? Like you think you can just go outside in a patch of grass and pull up some some fruit and bananas? You ain't even, you know, you ain't wait, even wait, wait, Yeah, you ain't wait, even done wait. nothing to make no garden some, yet. But some bananas. Out, out the grass. I mean, they grow from trees. <laughs> I mean, but out the grass, They grow though. from trees. That's what I'm saying. You <laughs> right. haven't even planted the seed for the banana tree. You ain't done nothing yet. Like, you expect them to I'll let you pass the fruit. it, don't we? Because like, you brought the tree man. in, but nigga, you said the grass. Uh, man, we're going, yeah. we going to break, man. <laughs> we're going to break. Selena Triff. <laughs> oh, man. We're going to uh, get into this first song right here by Cashmere, the Jedi, uh, called Jedi Movements. And we're going to come back, and we're going to discuss that with him a little bit. Y'all check it out, man. Tony Gilbert. This be the type of shit that you don't get until you get it Despite the fact it's vivid, cause I spit it how I live it Open up to get prescriptions, go and take your medicine Yo, I know I'm good now, just to say I'm better than Plus I'm in it, to win it, watch your nigga go and get it It's a Jedi movement, let my lyrics be the reason that that ass got influence I do this, no question marks for the clueless Check me out, I'm working bake with the switches so the blunts here right with your girl by my side. You can't tell me this is life, ignorance is hella bliss. Niggas act like these bitches and the bitches hella track. So I gotta stay high like I'm always catching flights. All these rappers sound the same with the styles that they bite. Then they call it sound waves, but I call it sound bite. Shit, fuck it, do your thing. Just don't kill my vibe. Please don't kill my vibe, cause all I do is vibe. I'm a Libra, check my sign. I just wanna tour the globe as I make the world mine. Took a glance at my watch and it said it's my time. Each and every time I rhyme with the chilly cold flow, sending tingles down your spine. As I keep the fans on lock and the foes on a climb, I was first to be nice, now I'm one of a kind. One hook, one verse, one flow at a time. Next city, next state, then the world's all mine. Mm. This be the type of shit that you don't get until you get it. Despite the fact it's vivid, cause I spit it how I live it. Open up to get prescriptions, go and take your medicine. Yo, I know I'm good now, just to say I'm better than. Plus, I'm in it to win it. Watch your nigga go and get it. This a Jedi movement. Let my lyrics be the reason that that ass got influence. I do this, no question marks for the clueless. Uh. <laughs> When I got up on the beat, that's when a nigga got foolish With the diarrhea flow, watch a nigga number two I told my nigga run it back, then that's when I round to it Wordplay be consistent, but I like to say it's fluent I'm a clever minded nigga with a witty ass mouth Wordplay, leave your speeches, let me tell you what I'm about Flow kick like Jet Li, I'm who to ask about How we get into this paper in my pockets in the drought It's like he pulled my pants down and left a nigga assed out He ain't got a buzz yet, but his skills is ill And I heard he make music for your soul to feel Always miss 
misunderstood cause they keep it too real Real laid back cat, heard the style is chill Not to mention that he greedy cause he trying to get a meal I heard he keep a checklist on some rappers he gon' kill This be the type of shit that you don't get until you get it Despite the fact it's vivid cause I spit it how I live it Open up to get prescriptions, go and take your medicine Yo I know I'm good now just to say I'm better than I'm in it to win it, watch your nigga go and get it This a Jedi movement, let my lyrics be the reason that that ass got influence I do this no question marks for the coolest. Check me out, son. on everybody this is your man spaceman Stu, aka the black fiend black phoenix productions you're tuned in to the uap radio show the underground apocalypse podcast show where we take the underground world and turn it upside down to the surface that last song right there was uh by cashmere the jedi the jedi movement oh man we gonna get, before we get into that song, before we get into that song, man, let's let's shout out to our sponsors right quick. Cause I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna ask you about a line, actually two lines, and I'm gonna ask you about. Um, one of our sponsors of this evening is Very Good Essentials. Uh, it's a very good line. Give your hair and skin what it craves. Very Good Essentials has its own naturally made shampoo and conditioners, all-in-one conditioners, curl custards, uh, hemp and honey lock butter, uh, shampoo and conditioner, moisturizing spray, hemp soap. Liquid gold to make your skin smooth. Hey, you know how you like to glow people out there, man. Y'all get to get the lip gloss and all that. Well, not the lip gloss, you know, lipstick, chapstick, whatever y'all ladies like to call it. Get your lips feeling better. I'm just telling you, man. If you want some, get you some very good essentials, man. Call 704-750-0690 for more details. Um, one of our other sponsors uh, for this evening is Naturally You Day Spa uh, by the owner Tamisha Brooks. Uh, you can definitely go get your facial, uh, get your face cleaned, uh, get your facial cleansers and uh, replenish your skin so you can be your natural self. Um, relax, restore, revive. They have facials, uh, eyebrows and uh, eyelashes. Uh, they do waxing services. Uh, you can call 980-319-2548 to get more information about that. But let's jump back into this interview. Cash me the Jedi. Yes, sir. So let me ask you this. I'm a, I'm a... I'm a person that's very, you know, I pay attention to the stars and stuff like that. And uh, I heard you drop a line in there about being a Libra. Like, do you, you know, feel, you know, very deeply connected with, you know, the Zodiac and stuff like that before we get into the music? Uh, somewhat, for, for the most part, yeah. Okay. So, so what is it that you, that you, that, that drew you toward, towards, I guess, the Zodiac? Um, I guess when I was young, my mom, she would read the horoscopes. Yeah. Like, before it was, like, on the internet and on the phone, she used to get, like, these little books with it and whatnot. And she will read them to me, and I'm like, yo, I'm going through that right now. <laughs> but that's when I was a kid, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, 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 As right. I got older, you know what I'm saying, it was it was more pinpoint, you know what I'm saying? Because, believe it or not, people can say they're, they're different or they're unique. I mean, yeah, everybody's different, but, you know, people go through somewhat the same kind of thing is just how they deal with it. You know what I'm saying? They like to base it off the same. I don't really think it's, it's like that, but you know, it just happened to be on point that day every time you read it. But I don't know. I don't, I don't really mess with it no more. You know what I'm saying? From past relationships and stuff like oh, that. Oh man. So, I'm, I'm done with it. <laughs> I can dug it. See, I, I asked that because I'm, I, I'm into the Zodiac. Like as far as being a Leo, like as far as the lion and everything they have on, the, most of the stuff anyway. Most sometimes I'd be like, man, that ain't got nothing to do with me. But sometimes, sometimes it do. It's, it's almost like luck or whatever. But when what uh for the for the month of uh, Libra, what is what month is that? What is I guess I guess when you know what month is your birthday in? Yeah, it's in October. October, October. My grandma's birthday is October. Wonderful. She's good people. Already. Don't even. Know. <laughs> <laughs> my grandma always my my birthday the second of October. That's how I always remember my grandma. For real? Yeah. Wow, small world. Now I'm always remember your birthday. You <laughs> have no choice. You have no choice. 
<laughs> oh man, that's crazy. Now I'm gonna remember your birthday for real, for real. Uh, but uh, back to the song, man. Who made the beat? Uh, it was made by my boy uh, Young TG the guy, but his producer name is uh, Tony Gilbert. So. Okay. Young TG, I apologize. Young T, okay, okay. What, what, what drew you sonically? What drew you to that beat? I don't know. I just got that that old Young Jeezy feel. Like when Jeezy first came out, it was mm-hmm. kind of like he had that that wittiness to him, that cleverness. Yes. Then he had that that street with it. Then he had like that laid back style, but it was like still kind of crunk. So it was kind of mm-hmm. like, hey, I could. I can vibe, do something with it. That's right. the kind of felt I got from it. Cause like when I get beats from certain people, they be like, um, imagine such and such. Or like, I, I'll never forget uh, one of these dudes I used to mess with, his name was Slick Top. And he gave me this beat and played it for a while. And then I posted it on my Snapchat. And, uh, he was like, he, he wrote back to it. He was like, think no limit, think Master P. And you know what I'm saying? When Snoop Dogg was with him and stuff like that, right. but it don't come out how I think it be sounding like to me. I didn't really try to take Jeezy's approach. That's just when I heard the beat. That's what made me resonate. Then like he's real, my my man's real like musically inclined. So like he made the beat and he couldn't do nothing with it. So mm-hmm. he gave it to me. I was like, yo, I'm about to fuck this up. You right, especially you didn't gave me a free beat. A free beat. You know what I'm saying? about to so, I'm about to eat. Exactly. <laughs> so. Just like I just fe- I felt it, but then again I'm talking about it had that whole Jeezy feel, but it had that laid back kind of like Cali feel to it a little bit. If you ask me, but that's just me. So I was I'm just a, like I'm gonna go ahead and do my thing on it. I'm gonna tell you what I, I I hate being compared or comparing an artist to somebody. Like that's that's just me, and I don't wanna don't make it seem like I'm comparing it. When I heard it, I didn't hear the Jeezy. I heard do you, you ever heard of? Um, with uh, Chip the Ripper. Chip the Ripper. Uh, uh, I know Chip the Ripper, but I, I know what dude you're talking about. I don't know his name either, though. I know Chip the Ripper. Though. Man, Chip <laughs> Chip the Ripper, his um, gift raps. Yeah. When I heard, when I first heard gift raps, like that, like that style, like I was, I was blown away. Just it was the laid back style, but when I say his lyrics was like flawless on that's what i'm hearing like the beat the beat is smooth and it's chill and it's like but your the lyrics that you delivering on it your word play everything is like flawless and it just lay on there and then somebody it's a different style it's your style and you you know how you were saying you know you deliver your lyrics how you talk you lay back your lyrics come off laid back but it's punch lines within there if you listen yeah like like uh what was the line that you said um uh, uh what my uh I think you said with my pants down like I'm assed out. Uh, I said, uh, my, what I said? I said they don't. Um, it's like they pull my pants down and left a nigga assed out. Like it's punchlines within there, but it's laid, it's laid back, chill. Like, like it's like, like you can say something slick to somebody and it go over their head. Yeah, they, all the time. Like all just, the time. just some shit like that. Like yeah. that's that's what I got from. But like Chip, Chip had that that type of the vibe with me with gift rap. Like, I'm like, Damn. That's that's just what I heard. Like I didn't I didn't hear the Jeezy. Not not no disrespect to Jeezy or nothing like that. I heard, you know, like a chip, that Chip the Ripper type sound. If it was any type of, I guess, relatability to it. But I fucked with it. Like it. when when did that come out and where would you at mentally as an artist to create that? Um, to be honest with you, when the beat was made, like what he said, like last year. It was like a whole entire year ago. Because I remember he played it for us like when we first met him. Mm. And uh, he played like a selection of beats. But I didn't pay this one no mind. You know, it kind of went over my head. So I say about like maybe three, four months ago. Three, four months ago. Yeah, it was like three, four months ago when it got done. But what came to my head was just like that whole... Let me let me see if I could, you know what I'm saying, switch it up. That was the whole approach, you know what I'm saying? Like instead of giving that, you know what I'm saying, that old boom pat feel, let's let's try to go a different direction. Like, let's try to uh, like reach out to other audiences that like that laid back style, but they can give you that kind of, you know, that little two step to it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like it's it's not really for like a certain audience, but it's more people that appeal to like music they want to ride to. You know what I'm saying? It's it's to the point where you can bob your head or, you know what I'm saying, hit a little, you know what I'm saying, with your, with right. your people, you know, like something out there. With your, you know what I'm saying? It's real chill. So I was just, I'm going to take that approach, but keep the same style and just apply it to something else. So in my mind, I'm like, yo, I'm going to go at it like this. 
and it, I didn't even think it was gonna work out like that to be honest with you because I, I can still hear what y'all don't you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying so to me it was just like that's what you hear that's what you hear but to me I hear something that was completely different but going in I was just thinking like yo we're gonna try something different so when you first made it did you actually like it um no I didn't it, it kind of grew mm -hmm. on me it really grew on me. It had to grow on me. I think this is one of the ones where I was like, I don't I don't understand why you don't like it. But, you know, that's what I wanted to ask you, though. With your music, do you find that you you love it straight off the bat normally, like with most of your songs? Or is it something that, like you said, has to grow on you for the majority of your music? Um, when I actually started putting myself on wax I would say like every song I did I loved it you know what I'm saying but like the more and more I kept doing it it was like I'm I'm not really fucking with this one you know what I'm saying or I go back to it and listen again being under the influence you know what I'm saying okay <laughs> it sounds good you know what I'm saying maybe it only sounds good when I'm this way you know what I'm saying but like most of my songs I loved them or I, I either love them, then I hate them, then I love it again, or it grew on me. You know what I'm saying? Because one of my favorite songs that I've done so far was uh, Quick Shit. I had my man doing the ad libs and, you know, the uh, engineering and whatnot. And that's that song, nobody really understands it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, it's called Quick Shit. You can look it up on uh, SoundCloud. You know what I'm saying? Of course, with my rap man. But when I played it, you know what I'm saying? It was like, to me, that was like the hardest I, f I felt like I ever went. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? The whole metaphors that I use, even for the hook, like that that one's still like my favorite song. Like it's, it's all, all in my playlist for like whatever I got in my phone. You know what I'm saying? I had to throw me in there. You know what I'm saying? Right. You got, you got to. You <laughs> always got your own personal go-to song. Yeah, exactly. So it's, I don't know. It's just like a like a love hate type thing with my music you know what I'm saying I, mean, I wouldn't say I hate it I, mean, I think I just get tired of it because by the time everybody else is hearing it which didn't dawn on me as an artist like with Sierra she came out what was her first song um uh I don't think it's with goodies was it mm -hmm. I know I know what you're talking about but that song I can't, I can't remember she it. was like 16 when she made it Mm -hmm. But it didn't blow up until she was like 19, early 20s. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. That made me think about like uh, Rihanna's that uh, Ponder replay. That song was old. Yeah, it was yeah. super old before she actually got you know heard or whatever. Before it started actually popping. And that that's that's crazy as an artist. Like you would hear stuff, from people. Like before it even get to other people, you'd be like, man. I'm of hearing this man like I, like this that's old to me like that sound whack like I could have went harder on that like exactly. I, Every hear, time. I hear this blah 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 somebody else be like man that's dope like man why I ain't never heard man that's just like like cause you are already on like three or four other projects ahead thinking on other stuff that you gonna do in the future and this is like old but you have to remember like as a listener nobody's ever heard this like how did I feel when I first thought about making this song like if you can go back to that then you can kind of understand where people are coming from with it when they be like man that song dope that's just dope that's dope just that and the third but if you can't necessarily go back there then it's gonna you know appreciate it like I don't like it like that though I feel you um I wanted to ask you this um bouncing kind of off of the whole the uh with the artist or whatever. Um, excuse me, I had, I, had, I had one of those just brain farts, so to speak. Um, I wanted to ask, um, as far as off of the off of the music, like, how do you feel? I'm going to go to community talk. Like, okay. I want to jump to some community talk. Okay. Like, how do you feel, like, as far as it is, um, since you're down here, did you hear anything about the new business, the business that happened up in Charlotte, the guy that choked out the, uh, the girl? Um, in the beauty supply store? Misha's beauty supply. Yeah, that. Homegirl that was accused of stealing, but for the record, had nothing stolen on her. Yeah, she got choked out by a Chinese man. He was the owner. Not, don't, don't, don't say I'm trying to put a race card. I'm just calling facts. Uh, whatever he was. He was a foreign, a foreign man. He, he had her on the ground, like, choked, like, literally, like, in the head lock. And his, whoever that was, his wife or whatever, was seemed like she was just pulling at her arm, like, trying to get her up. Like, well, for one, how is she going to get up if you got this man choking her, for one, and you just keep on pulling? Like, and I mean, he's like, like, no, you ain't going nowhere type deal. Like, where are you at with, you know, have you heard anything about that? I ain't heard nothing about it, to be honest with you. But if, I hope it's not who I think it is, because I know a female that I went to high school with. Her mm -hmm. name is, like, Tomisha. 
and she owns like her own little beauty supply store. It's not like a beauty like where a little hair salon joint. Uh-huh. Well, no, this was this is Asian owned. Um, this is an Asian owned spot uh, off of West Boulevard or Wilkinson Boulevard. I can't remember which one, but uh, it's a place that me and my sisters frequent quite often. As you know, we want to go get our hair supplies. But my biggest problem with it is not so much the lack of coverage because there's been plenty of coverage but the fact that this is not a wake up call to people that we should be putting into our own uh, businesses and supporting right. our own you know it, it's just like why do things like this have to happen to make niggas get up and be like okay I'm gonna support other people that look like me right and see that that makes me go back to uh, um, actually the episode I re-aired with the Fickle last week. Uh, we were speaking on why does it have to get to a point of chaos for people to want to sit down and understand stuff? Why do about six, seven, nine, you know, I'm jumping numbers, but why, do, why does people have to get killed or hurt or put in a position of chaos for people to be like, all right, now we got to fix this? Like, why, why do y'all think that it gets to like a point of chaos before... It, it's a, a a need or a want to, hey, man, we got to fix this. Like, you already see it's a problem. and have to. I mean, I I say it's like this. Um, it's, it's just the laws of physics, how you want to put it. You can't have the, the good without the bad. You can't have the, the pretty without the ugly. You know what I'm saying? You can't have perfect without the, the misfits. Whatever you want to call it. But to me, it's more so like um, you, you got to go through the, through the bad. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you gotta that's go real. through the bad in order to get to the good. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have nothing good come out of it later. But we didn't have nothing good come out until like uh what happened with the Jews? You know what I'm saying? When when Hitler had this whole Aryan race he was trying to build, you know what I'm saying? That went on for like for for, for fucking ever. You know what if I'm saying? Happened. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But when that happened, Germany as a as a whole country, you know what I'm saying, as a whole, you know what I'm saying? economy, whatever you want to call it, you know what I'm saying? They, they're they not like that no more, you know what I'm saying? So when people hear Germany, the first thing that comes to their mind is who? Hitler, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, the Nazis. But, but it's not like that no more. But matter of fact, that's like one of the places I love to move to, you know what I'm saying? It's, Given the opportunity to move out there, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's more so you can't, you just can't go without that, you know what I'm saying? It's, hell, we were slaves for like almost 600, 800 years now, you know what I'm saying? Like that's... That's crazy, but out of that, we well, we st- we still in that shit. It's just more of a mental thing. I, but, I, I was getting yeah. ready. To, I was getting ready to probe your mind. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but you, I, know you know what? what my biggest thing, what irks the fuck out of me, is after all the outrage and all the fucking rioting and shit. After that, niggas still go back to okay, I'm gonna go shop at this business because I want to. Not okay, we're gonna continue to support, we're gonna continue to uplift, we're gonna make our own shit. Nah, niggas is going straight back and doing the same dumb shit that they was doing beforehand. And I feel like I don't care what white people do. Like I don't care. We gotta take some responsibility ourselves. The blame gotta put be put somewhere. And how about we put it in the right place this time and say, hey, I dropped the ball. I didn't do what it was that I needed to do. Right. Like, I, I, I was gonna say off of that, like, you know, people go back to these businesses like where 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 am I gonna go? Like there aren't any there if there is a business. Like I seen I seen a video of a girl the other day. Uh uh, just hilarious official off of Instagram. She's hilarious. Out of Baltimore, I think it is. Um, y'all definitely can go look her up. Uh, she was she had put up a video about uh, I guess not su- you know supporting black owned businesses. And she she a black girl. And you know she was saying she don't support all black owned businesses. And somebody had jumped in on her timeline or whatever on the comments. Now if I'd have just heard that. I would be like, man, what you mean? Like, damn, this is almost like sellout type deal. But um, what I seen was she put out another uh, another uh, video. She put out another video that I'm gonna um, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back and talk about that. We're gonna go to a, a, a quick break real fast, and we're gonna come right back. But y'all, y'all hold on to that. Hold on to that thought, man. Y'all stay right here with us. We'll come back. Right. Swear again. Bye, 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 bye. Yeah. 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 
rip. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Oakland, America, hood up there. I heard them niggas ain't playing fair. I'm kinda glad that you took it there. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Make it count, make it count. Make it count, make it count. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Oakland, America, hood up there. I heard them niggas ain't playing fair. I'm kinda glad that you took it there. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Make it count, make it count. Make it count, make it count. Look at here, look at here, look at me. Power moves running like Booker T. Uh, ain't shit sweet around here, nigga. I got the juice and it's sugar free. Gotta make sure that they're rubbing there. I see two bitches like Tupperware. Back in this bitch at another year. 2.0, 2.0. No busy, no busy, no busy. Hey, the chosen one, this is too easy. I throw a three, four, fours. Me and five back on the road. Down six, seven, man, eight, shit. Probably hit the nine round, ten, eleven. Fuck 12, we make bail. Hey, pay for walk, bank sale. Friday the 13th, I drop 15 tracks. Goddamn, I just killed 14. How the fuck did I do that? Real. Well, fuck it, it's 2016. And I cannot stop doing numbers. I make that pussy do numbers. Make it count, make it count. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Oakland, America, hood up there. I heard them niggas ain't playing fair. I'm kinda glad that you took it there. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Make it count, make it count. Make it count, make it count. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Triple D America, hood up there. I heard them niggas ain't playing fair. I'm kinda glad that you took it there. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Make it count, make it count. Make it count, make it count. Look at here, look at here, look at me. Leave out the spot with a super free. Pay from the red, oh, they super cheap. Cause I ain't no more safety cheap. Don't need no help, bitch, it's all in me. I put one one deep in the double seat. Put that in the back and I hit the streets. Don't tell nobody you shot with me. It's about one o'clock and I want two plus of gas and four over three on all. Bitch on my line, say she need four hand of balls. Come meet me out in the north. On the five, in my road, I got six cars. Four and four, my whole garage. Oh, no, no, I heard it. Got hit like self time, nigga, must have been with the Lord. Eight Instagrams and it be super hard. Turn the Roma with the nine millimeter stuck in the club with the fucking toy. All these dial pieces on my car. Lyric showed over these nail bars. I got your baby mama on the 12th floor while you get dressed for the hood awards. Oh, Clip America, hood yeah. up I heard them niggas ain't playing fair. I'm kinda glad you took it there. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Make it count, make it count. Make it count, make it count. Look at here, look at here, look at here. Triple the America, hood of fell. I heard them niggas ain't playing fair. I'm kinda glad you took it there. Look at here, look at here, look at him. Look at here, look at here, look at him. Make it count, make it count. Mama, make it bounce, make it bounce. Hey. Bitty, bitty. Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? This is your man, Spaceman Stu, a.k.a. The Black Fiend, Black Phoenix Productions. You're this tuned in to the UAP Black radio Phoenix show, the Underground Apocalypse podcast show, where we take the underground world and turn it upside down to the surface. And uh, we always have my lovely co-host over here, Miss Selena. How you doing? I'm great. And we got my boy Cash Mr. Jedi in here as well. Gucci. I'm good, my brother. I'm good. Um... 
Today's episode is brought to blah, 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 blah. Today's episode is brought to you by Three Brothers Catering. Uh, the lowest art of cooking. Uh, located at 213 North Piedmont Avenue, Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Uh, go out there this weekend, man. Uh, Friday and Saturday, and uh, I definitely have Sunday specials for the Sunday dinners. Uh, if you don't feel like cooking, or for the people who can't cook and claim to cook. Uh, you know who I'm talking about. You know who you are. But they got fish plates, hamburger plates, hot dog plates, uh, chicken plates. Uh, when I say it's so good, you might go home and slap your mama. But if you think about it again, if you got a mama like mine, nah. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna definitely gonna, gonna love the food though. Um, you're not gonna uh, go do nothing crazy. But uh, our other sponsor is also uh, the courtesy of the Black Business Expo of 2017. Um, uh, the networking cultural event uh, gives people the benefit of making immediate sales, generating new leads and clients, and uh, giving live product and service demonstrations to the public. And uh, it allows the, the businesses of the community to, to reconnect with the community, which is uh, something that we was definitely discussing right here uh, before we went to break. Um, I was talking about uh, Jess Hilarious. Uh, she had put out a video talking about, you know, she didn't support all black businesses or whatever. Um, and then, you know, people was going in on her for saying that, but she came out with another one that was saying what she was meaning by not all businesses. Like, you have some black-owned businesses that doesn't run their business the way they should. Like, they're just, I guess, got their eyes above water, they ain't even got their head above water type deal, and they're trying to act like they're going professional, like... You ask for a business card, they'd be like, I'll take my number down type deal. This is what she was saying. Or you go to a you go to a crab restaurant and they don't have no crab. Like how you gonna be a crab restaurant and you ain't got no crab? Or you don't have no butter or you don't have no napkins or stuff like that. Which alright, I understand that, but don't you gotta understand if a business is just not starting to come up. But at the same time, we do got to start supporting these businesses so they can have that foundation or build that foundation to where they always have, uh, you know, things they need on stock. Uh, they always have their business cards. They always have, you know, everything they need. If you're still going out to other places, spending your money there, how do you expect them to, to be able to, you know, build any type of revenue coming into the business to keep the business afloat, to keep the things they need, to keep inventory? Um, do you feel where I'm coming from, or, or am, I, am I out there and, and, and I'm wrong? No, nah, I think you're 100% right. I mean, it's about building. Even just my own endeavors, I already know, you know, if I invite somebody to do something and they expect payment right off the bat, well, if I'm just building, what, what, what exactly am I supposed to pay you with, you know? It's just... It, it makes no sense, but that's why I feel like it's a flaw in our community as a whole. I mean, we... You can believe in somebody so much with words, but where is your where where are you when they really need you? Right. Get what I'm saying? So it's like I feel like I understand her statement of she don't support all black businesses. I feel like she should have cleared it up maybe from the very beginning. But I mean whatever. She did what she did and she did it the way she did it. People are gonna take it whichever way they want. I feel like if we truly wanna support one another, we have to be understanding at the same time. Okay. What about you, Jenna? Or do you want me to? Do I need to call I mean, out the full name? I don't want to disrespect. <laughs> you, you good? That, that's my nickname anyway. All right, but um, I mean, I concur with what she said. I mean, it is. It's that simple. You know what I'm saying? You can't sit here like um, you support all black businesses and then like down talk it. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna support it, support it. You gotta understand everything's a process. Everything's gonna take a minute. You know what I'm saying? So. Hey man, I had no damn napkins, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, right. I ain't got no damn french fries, whatever it is. Because at our school, we, I, we both go to Johnson C. Smith, you know what I'm saying? And they never got shit, you know what I'm saying? When niggas be hungry, you know, they don't got shit, you know what I'm saying? But we still come back. We still putting money into that business, you know what Right, what right, right, so right. We know it's not always going to be like this. Eventually, everything is going to, it's going to, it's going to fluctuate. It's going to, it's going to flow. It's going to be fluid, you know what I'm saying? So... I feel what she's saying. I feel what both of y'all are saying, but you know what I'm saying? I'm, con I'm concurrent with both of it, but to you know, sum it up, like that's that's just how people are in general, because right. to be honest with you, you know what I'm saying? Everybody thinks that I record in the studio. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I, re I record it in, in my, my nigga's dorm room, you know what I'm saying? And he just, just happened to so be good at the mix down part, you know what I'm saying? To the point where everybody think it's mixed and mastered, you know what I'm saying? So. 
people find out we doing that, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I thought y'all niggas was going to the studio. I was trying to go to the studio session. Well, nigga, if you want to go to the studio session, get your money up and you go. You know right. what I'm saying? Because for us, that's more of like a marketing strategy. You know what I'm saying? Like a, a cutback. Like the way to save money. You know what I'm saying? If you got the means and you know it's going to pay off in the end, you got to ride it the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, it's just, what's, what's the point? With no direction. You know what I'm saying? So right. It's like you're just doing something for no reason. Exactly. But, I mean, now, do you feel, now, on the flip side of that, you know, and I'm going to ask you too, Selena, do you think it's, you know, on mismanagement of their funds or their income or their assets? Like, you you know, you do have, when people are supporting or if they do have the capital for their business to have, you know, things on stock or to go to the studio or, you know, to invest in the different equipment that you need to build, you know, your studio up in the dorm room. Like, do you think that people mismanage that money and, you know, I'm just going to go out and spend it on money? Well, not spend money on money. Spend it on clothes or food or just, just the wrong type of stuff and rather than, you know, put it into the, I guess, the right... Um, investment investing in your stuff in the right way that way you can have stuff on stock to continue reselling because you know they think they have made a twenty dollar profit that they can go out and spend twenty dollars when they know you still need napkins you still need butter with that twenty dollars you still have it you still at zero exactly um i can definitely say that you know what i'm saying the mismanagement of the money then it's it's more so of the, I guess like the steps they're actually taking to, to get to that next level like they'll do bare minimum thinking it's gonna get them to the next level you might get to that next level but that don't mean you're gonna you're gonna produce at that next level you know what I'm saying it's gonna get harder for you because to get to that next level you bullshit it you know what I'm saying so you can't expect to get what you want out of it after you just bullshit it you know what I'm saying so it's, it's more so that and managing money because you know what I'm saying? Like, we're pushing, you know what I'm saying? And we, we got goals we're trying to reach, but we understand that things are at a, at a higher stake or a, a bigger at stake, you know what I'm saying? And it's like we have to, uh, you got to learn how to strategize and manage your money. You know what I'm saying? That's what it really comes down to. Real so. Well, as far as strategizing, what is your next strategy to, uh, I guess, Build that that way for Cash Made a Jedi. Like new projects, new new endeavors, new business, new like clothing line. Are you thinking like further? Like I'm th I'm asking that if you know if we was speaking on business wise. You know I, I want to know about the business of Cash Made a Jedi. Like where's where's your thought process with that? Um, my mind honestly is all over the place because of how I want to do it. But yes, I'm thinking about a clothing line. Um, I definitely want to put on for Charlotte because that's our biggest problem now. Anybody coming out of Charlotte and solely by themselves ain't, ain't trying to get no help or help anybody else. You know what I'm right. saying? I got a couple dudes that I know that I can or do appeal to like a certain audience. You know what I'm saying? He can, he can really use that kind of audience to help build a bigger audience. You know what I'm saying? I kind of want to build a team. You know what I'm saying? Then go from there. It's, I mean, it's simple. It's really all about the music. And then in between time, we can, you know, probably do more gigs, get our faces out there, more more on the visual aspect, start focusing more on the visual. You know what I'm saying? And then from the visual, once they see who we are, what, what styles that we possess, you know, with the clothing line. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all there. It's just timing. Right. Timing is everything. So I, I can sit here all day, like, we can, we're going to do this. Shit, we're going to do that. You know what I'm saying? But if the timing ain't right, it's not going to work out. Right. So it's, it's all about strategizing. So, yeah, we got things lined up. But that's just a little gist of, <clears throat> of what we got. But honestly, my main focus is to really be the, the face of Charlotte. You know, and, and Tree of Life putting on for Charlotte. And none of us is, you know what I'm saying, really wanting to put on for Charlotte because we know how it is. But we, we see the bigger picture. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You spoke on time, and I want you to uh, let the listeners know about your new single that's coming up. Um, thank you. I will. Uh, supposed to be dropping on Sunday. That's the 19th. You can download it on iTunes and Apple Music and then Google Play. Um, the name of the single is One Time For My Niggas. Go get that. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, <laughs> what is, you know, what, what can you it? explain a little bit? All right. One time for my niggas, uh, it was kind of like a, a phase. You know, like hot. Basically, my whole mixtape is about a phase that I was going through. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when I came out with that, I was thinking about past relationships. I was thinking about people I lost along the way to get to where I want to be in life. And then people I may not even fuck with no more. And those were the main people telling me, yo, you you got something. Don't, don't stop. Keep doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And we may not be niggas in that aspect, but at one point, you was my niggas. So I... Grinded that all up and put it into words to, to the best of my ability so that you can understand. And then it's more of a sense where people on the outside looking in, you know what I'm saying, where they don't know much about us and all they see is niggas, you know what I'm saying, but let's change their point of view on how we're really living. So in order for that to happen, we got to make a change and set the tone ourselves. So to sum it all up, I put it out, put it out all together and made it what it was. So it's really for everybody that I fucked with and don't fuck with and still fuck with to this day. And how we can we can still make this thing happen. Because I'm not really a a hold a grudge type person. Like you have to really, really do something to right. me for me to like really be like, man, fuck you and fuck you for life. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, right. It's not like that, you know what I'm saying? We could fall out right now. I mean, I, I fell out with plenty of people. We still cool to this day, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's something bigger than you and I. And if we can't, we can't like come together on something, then there's no point because I'm all about togetherness. I'm all about getting where you want to be, where I want to be. We can't do it by ourselves, you know what I'm saying? So I need you just as much as you need me. I don't know if people keep getting this idea where I can do it by my damn self. I guarantee you nobody's done it by themselves. For real, for real. Right. Nobody has. That's that's dead. That's dead as fuck. Nobody's ever done that. For real, for real. Unless you were just born with fifty trillion dollars. I don't see how it worked out for you. For real. For right. Real. You you need some help along the way. And even if it's not about the money, you need somebody that has the knowledge compared to the knowledge that you got. You know what I'm saying? So when I did the song, I kept all that in mind. And that's just how it came out. So drops on Sunday on iTunes and Google Play and Apple Music. Go get that. You won't definitely be disappointed. Definitely going to be sharing that. Um, I'm definitely going to get my own copy as well. <laughs> I like how you spoke on, um, as far as... Uh, <laughs> as far as what you were saying, um, with, with, with the, um, supporting one another and, you know, forgetting your grudges and stuff like that, I feel like if... You can't if it ain't nothing no physical altercation, you didn't draw no blood and we didn't, you know, go at it like that. If we can't really come to no type of terms, then it almost like it wasn't no real love there in the first place. Exactly. Like, you know, we get into it, that might have just been a day for me. Like, it might have just been one of those fuck it days when I woke up, like, man, ain't shit going right. I stomped my toe when I woke up. Exactly. And I did that, I dropped and broke my phone. Then I just so happened to run into you and you did some bullshit, to, you know, some small shit to piss me off, but it seemed like, you know, colossal. Yeah. And you know, then you have an argument or something, you can't come back off of something like that, then it really wasn't no love there in the first place. But if it's, if it's like physical altercation, then hey, it might be fuck you for life type deal. But, you know, that's, that's just me though. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, hey, yes, like, if, yes. like, if somebody... If somebody go to the extreme to like physically harming you, like you're not gonna go to that that real extreme to where you can cause nobody no physical harm, exactly. like unless it's real, you know, vicious like type deal. Or I'm Shit defending myself. Me. Oh wait a minute, now I mean, what do you, what do you mean? Me. Look, that's my thing. I'm not I'm not a confrontational person. So if you take me to that level, it's for real. But me personally, whether somebody. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. If, I mean, I'm the type of person, I'm not going to tell you, I don't, I don't really hold grudges, but if you do something to me, and it ain't even got to be a physical something, if I decide at that point that I'm not fucking with you, that's cool. I'm not going to fuck with you. But I ain't got no ill will towards you. Right. I'm just not fucking with you. Right. Period. Like, I'm talking about to the point where you can be broke down on the street, 
at, with a car. I ain't saying, you know, like somebody just broke out right, living right, on right, the streets. Right, but right. I mean, you can be broke down on the street and I'm going to speed up. I'm going to let my window up and I'm going to speed up because that's just me. I have to have some time to Eddie. get over that shit. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't care. Like, right now, I got a sister that I'm not even fucking with that hard right now just because of some shit she did to me. It's not that I'm a ruthless mm. person, but... It's, there's a line. It's always got to be a line, and if people cross that line, it's like fuck it, you know. It's a it's a respect boundary across the board. I, I, can, I can dig it. I can dig it. Well, I don't want to. want to go go down that road. We gonna we definitely want to want to keep the focus on Cashmere the Jedi. Um, you got any new new uh other than your new single getting ready to come out? You got any new projects that you're working on? Um, uh, anything like that? Cause if we get to talking about that, will we? We be talking for days about stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, I think we're gonna do Dow Part Two, well, Volume Two. That's a uh, mixture of where Dow. Um, what is that? Dow stands for Day in the Life. Okay. And the whole concept of the first—that was like my first mixtape. Um, it's on SoundCloud. And what you do is, oh, what it was was where I take like skits from my favorite movies and. Like, uh, use the skits to compare it to my life, you know what I'm saying? Then go off of that and then, you know what I'm saying, get something going. But I'm going to take a different approach and give you, you more of me, you know what I'm saying? Less skits, you know what I'm saying? Less less movies to compare my life to, you know what I'm saying? So it's more so me just really, like, learning from the game, you know what I'm saying? Like, learning from wanting to see where this music thing takes me. So, yeah, the project's going to be called uh, Day in the Life, Volume 2, so... Day in the life volume two. Is this gonna be something you're gonna continue doing like on a series basis or is this just something that you you know just doing for now? Yeah, it's definitely gonna be on the uh the continuous basis. So it's kinda of like a, a insight uh, mainly like a journal. You know what I'm saying? Okay. In a sense, like a journal from where I started to where I'm at and where I'm headed. You know what I'm saying? And then from there, uh, you, you'll get the gist of who I really am, even if you never took the time to ever get to know me as a person. Okay. Yeah. So is the song, uh, what is this, uh, D-I-A? I, uh, yeah, I'll switch up. Yeah. Is this one of the songs that's on the project as well? Yes, it is. All right. Uh, explain this to people as we, you know, we segue into this. Okay. Um, Dow switch up, which I told you Dow stands for a day in the life. <clears throat> and all it is is like, to me, when, when we made the song, it was more like a, uh, at any given moment, you know what I'm saying, people can switch up. Your life can change. You can lead this earth. You know what I'm saying? So in a sense, you're thinking about all of this, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what are you doing? at that very moment, you know what I'm saying, before that switch up, you know what I'm saying, so it was more so for like real hip hop heads, you know what I'm saying, people who really can dissect lyrics and understand where I'm coming from, but all it really is is just <clears throat> situations in my life that have, you know what I'm saying, changed dramatically, you know what I'm saying, things I never thought would happen, you know what I'm saying, and then, like honestly, just recording from his room, I didn't even think we would make it this far. You know what I'm saying? Like people on the outside looking like, nigga, I ain't doing shit. You know what I'm saying? But we're, we're still independent artists on iTunes, SoundCloud. You know what I'm saying? Spotify, all the, all these major apps you can download music. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? That's that's like a major move. You know what I'm saying? So that switch up. You know what I'm saying? Like from just putting our shit on SoundCloud and promoting for just SoundCloud. Now we can promote for iTunes or Google Play. Or right, go buy my Apple shit. Music, you know what I'm saying? You can go, yeah, go buy my <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? Like it's only a dollar. You know right, you like, got a damn. dollar. It's only a damn dollar. Right, yeah, like go buy my shit. <laughs> go buy my shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the whole point of Dow Switch Up. And it was only right to have my man, you know, talking shit. You know what I'm saying? Because oh, so that, that that was you on there talking, talking shit. Okay, okay, you know what okay. What I'm <laughs> So it was, that was just the whole purpose of the song, which was kind of um, inspired by my first mixtape, which was Dow. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. So look, look, all right. Now if we gon' if we if we end it, we gonna end the show out, man. I want you to to give give you know everybody your you know your contact information where they can find you, and then I want you to leave people you know introduce this next song coming up right here i want you to introduce the switch up give me your information and introduce the switch up all right uh this is your boy cashmere the jedi that's uh you can find me on instagram at jedi scheme that's j-e-d-i-s-k-e-e-m 
You can also get me on SoundCloud. That's uh, Cashmere the Jedi, yell again. But when you spell Cashmere, it's all caps, no S. But I have replaced the S with a dollar sign. You can also look me up on Facebook. <laughs> they told me to change the name, but it's, it's stuck with me since high school. It's called Swig Hooper McJigger. That's spelled S W I G G H O P R uh, two two O's P E R <laughs> McJigger M C J I G G A. You know what I'm saying? So, um, with no further ado, you can look me up on this. And then, like I said, I'm dropping on iTunes. This Sunday, Apple Music, Google Play, Spotify the following week. And then um, from there, I'm all yours. It's only a dollar. So we about to go ahead and get into this song. It's Cashmere the Jedi featuring Tree of Life. The dial switch up. Get you some of that. Hey, my nigga Cashmere the motherfucking Jedi on the beat. Uh, Black Swan, congratulations. The beat sound wonderful. I know the Jedi got some heat for this one. It's nothing but homicides, dusty holes, and cotton mouth for niggas try imitating our flows, homie. Hey, when this one get exposure, we don't need none of y'all riding away. You might drown, bitch. Hey, show me with the force, Jedi. <laughs> Rah! Life really sucks, but she ain't giving no head. It's on to the next once that ass is dead. So I gotta get these bills to keep the family fed. Put it on a tree of life, let them know that we here. We I got ills, kill a pill with anything that I kill. Damn it, when it's major pain, motherfuckers know the drill. But these niggas acting funny, call them Ken Pill. I keep it really real, for real. My nigga, what's the deal? I'ma spit it how I feel. That's a lobby with emotions. They don't pay attention now, but later they will quote them when they asking for a verse again. I said I wouldn't do it, but I had to do it, man. And you know how I do. Came through talking shit again, so fuck your hand out. I really don't need it. Plus, these niggas still sleeping on me like a temper pedic. So I gotta set it off. That's where the jaded picking. I'm content with my content. You ain't gotta listen, but I thought I'd let you know this is comeback season. Bitch. Hey, nigga. Hey, 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 bring some more of that shit back, nigga. We need some more of that hot fire. We need some more of that shit, nigga. Some more of that shit, nigga. I told you it was real in the motherfucking field, but you ain't gotta take my word for it, nigga. I just let Cashmere do his damn thing once again, motherfucker. Good, nigga. Sometimes what you make, nothing is bullshit Ooh. Actions and decisions we learn to live with Ooh. I suggest you keep it real, otherwise you counterfeit So if you make your moves, make sure your heart's in it Damn. No regrets or repentance So practice what you preach like you do your religion The world is for the taking, that's pretty much a given But giving your situation, the vision becomes limited Bullshit, cow poop, keep the squares out the loop Like they do you, you ain't trying to do them You just trying to do you yeah. Then they make you feel bad, yo I pity the fool No disrespect to Mr. T but I'll take some weed and tea Play to it. get that relief in the fix I need. Only on the beat does my soul start to bleed from the pen with mental thoughts that seem to have me intrigued. The writer's block in peace. Make your move, y'all. I'm going steady. Took my time with the shit. Now nah, I nigga ready, y'all. But I stay humble. Has it stay petty? I came fresh about the womb. I was born ready. I tell him no snitching. There's nothing you can tell me. I'm pissing on the competition. Call me all Kelly. And I ain't stopping till I'm number one like Nelly. I fucked around and got sick. Now a nigga illin'. No murder charges, but I make a killer. If God will, that means the Lord willing. But the devil can't. He just good at sinning, and I never save a hope. I'm a super villain. I'm always ready, even when I'm chilling. Well, I'm got some cooler than the motherfucker. Just don't tell your dad that I'm the motherfucker, and I can only be myself like no other. I'm such an asshole. Ill. I keep my shit tight. I eat beats, no sound bites. I'm Cashmere, and it's the insight. It took a minute, put my shit right. No weight room. But I gotta flex, and if my music make me money, I want a sound check. You feel me? Word. What's going on, everybody? This is your man, Spaceman Stu. And if you've heard any of your content aired on our platforms, remember, UAP Radio is your local and online news media broadcasting company who specializes in bringing you the news of the community. So if you would like your content aired or an interview, please contact us at UAPRadio.com. <laughs> 